Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, you know, my dad. Man, man, man. I'm here, man. This guy right here, man. Last time he was on the show, it, it, it man, there was a few things that happened that I didn't know were going to go crazy. It just went crazy on the internet, man. Mm-hmm. And they're like, man, what the heck is happening, man? And I look and they say, oh, he said this. Uh, and I, I was like, man, th- I never would have thought that because mm-hmm. we were just talking, man. My guy, man, my friend, Ayatollah Marv is in the building. What's going on? Revely, revely, revely. <laughs> man, thank you for coming back on the show. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Man, you and and I hear all kind of stuff, man. I, I heard some threats. I, I heard one what? guy had threatened. To, uh, I thought it, it, it was on Clubhouse. A guy threatened to uh, jump on you or something. I, oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hey. I seen that on Clubhouse, he man. I said he's going to knock me out. Whack are, you, are you even on Clubhouse? No, I don't even know. I, I don't know what uh, Clubhouse. How Mickey did, Mouse is Clubhouse. <laughs> ain't it? Mouse How is did you house. end up even hearing about this? They called me and told me, "Man, what what one hundred say he gonna knock you out when he see you?" And I'm like, "How that's gonna happen?" <laughs> like who do that? He just gonna walk up to you and just knock you out. Just knock me out. So I was, you know, I'm like, well, okay. Does he so, live up there with you? Huh? Does he live in L.A. as well? That man lives 60 miles away. He ain't, he ain't been in California and Compton in his life unescorted. Oh. He's he's just talking. And uh, so, yeah, I heard about How it. How did the conversation go? Do you got it up? You, uh, I, uh, uh, the conversation went like, I don't, he said that I was, uh, well, I was on Adam 22. Okay. And Adam 22 asked me, was uh, he from, uh, was he a Piru? And I said that he wasn't from Compton. So this happened after your interview with Adam Twain. No, yeah, right. Not, yeah. It happened after? I yeah, thought it happened during. That's, that's no. what he said. Okay. Uh, let me show you. Let me show you what he said. So. I didn't call him with saying, hey, you got some. This happened the other day. Mm-hmm. This. Wait a minute. So we ain't. So, okay. And niggas think that you run Piru, nigga, you don't. Have I ever said I ran Piru? Yes, sir. You indicated that. Man, I'll give you a hundred thousand. I've seen this shit right now. Man, what day we gonna do with all this? Nigga, I can go on that motherfucker and just say, I got something. Months ago, homie. He just told me the law. He ain't never told me in the law, Dumb shit. I'm just saying, with me and you, I wind the fuck of weird beefing. That's me. Mm-hmm. Nigga, you, what the fuck you mean? You go on fucking... I don't know you, just like you say you don't know motherfuckers. I don't know you, nigga. Fuck hey, you. Bro, bro. Then why did you... Hey, listen, bro. Listen, I, they asked me, was you was you a pyro? And I say, he's not from Compton. That ain't what you say. Okay, I'm hey, old. I, right. I, I, I forget right. what the fuck I said. What did I, I say, bro? Right. Let me get this right. You can't keep you can't tell motherfuckers all over the state that you I don't Piru and niggas think that you run Piru, nigga, you don't. Have I ever said I ran Piru? Yes, sir, you indicated that. Where? I give you a hundred thousand niggas show me why I said I ran Piru. On Piru. On everything Piru said for, I talk the bag off. If you show me anywhere, why I ever say don't go for it, nigga run Piru. No one nigga ran Piru, period. No, no one nigga, you showed me why I ever said I ran Piru. No, no, hey, hey, Marvin, in fairness to him on that, all he ever said. No, no, I, I never said he, I said the indication, bro. I said the indication. What's the indication? Nigga, I'll represent Piru, I'm going to stand on it. Okay, nigga, represent, re- represent Pacoima, nigga. Nigga, I'll represent Piru, nigga, because guess what? When I was behind them walls, what wall? What wall? Where was you at, wall. nigga? You was in Chuckawalla. Are you for real? Ain't you, real. you didn't do time in Chuckawalla? On a nine month five, like the last thing You I'm didn't right. do, you didn't do time in Chuckawalla? Solid Dad, Folsom, Solid Dad, Folsom, Pleasant Valley, Corporate, nigga. Take on 9170. Fuck out of here, nigga. Okay. What you talking to, nigga? Well, I'm talking to you, bitch ass nigga. What the fuck you? Nigga, 
ninety two thousand niggas. You are you are late break freight, motherfucker. I don't give a fuck. I ain't never been to the pit in two thousand. Okay, in two thousand. Four nine one seven zero. Have you been to the pit? Cause you know what the J. I'm a B number, nigga. What the fuck you talking about? I'm a B number. Okay, what is you talking about? I'm a B number, nigga. So a J number to ninety four number. A J number. I don't know nothing. I, I was in ninety four. I was in Ironwood State Prison where you was in Chuckawalla. Okay, so what's the point, bro? Where are we gonna meet at? Where where are we gonna meet at, bro? No, whatever you wanna do, all you gonna do is you, die, nigga. Okay, that's what I'm there. I'm, I, I, what I, guess what happened if you do? That's all you gonna do is die. Okay, let's let's see, let's see. Where can we do this at? I tell you what, I tell you what, I'm gonna show you what this bag do. I'll holler at you. Okay, for sure. <laughs> so I'm curious, how did that call happen? Uh, oh that's Reggie Wright. Reggie okay. R- Reggie Wright Jr. put me on the phone with him. And this mm. happened how long after this the is just happened Sunday. This oh, this Sunday. just something last just happened. Okay. This, he had been because he's uh after he said And this was because of what he said on Clubhouse. Yes, after that, that. That's when okay. he said he was gonna knock me out. So when he said he was gonna knock me out. Oh, that was your response to him. Uh-huh. This is across the street from where Suge ran over. It's a town. This okay. is a garage. Wow. You can still throw hands? Huh? Can you still throw hands? What? Girl, I do this. <laughs> Wow. Let me ask you, man. So this here, this this, this happens just so fast because this they go on uh, to the, Adam, the No Jumper right. show. Once y'all go on the No Jumper show, you lead a No Jumper show. He jumps on Clubhouse, Clubhouse. after it comes out. Say, 72-year-old man, I don't know this nigga. Now, he said he don't know me, but let me show you. And this nigga was acting all timid. We was so-and-so-and-so. He, he said he don't know you. He said... But he say, I don't know nothing about it. He came to some event last year, 18 months ago, and, and this one, one of my partners, his son was running for mayor. And I was there. He was invited, right? Let, let me see that. So this is this is 2015. This is Game doing a uh, a video with with Drake. Okay. Okay. This is whack one, this is wacko right here. That's from the West Side. That's that's whack one hundred right there. Acting timid. It's here. Here is another g- with this with pictures smiling. Man. Okay. This is this is white boy Rob's s- son right here. He's from Cedar Block. Him and Game get into an argument. If you look, you see he have a gun, right? When Wack 100 seen the gun, he took, man, he got a gun. Him and Drake went to the back. All that shit about, he didn't jump up for for game 2015. So he, and, and he didn't do it. He wasn't doing none of that. None of that. So this man say he gonna knock me out. You know he hit this boy named Stitches, a white boy. Yeah, yeah. Suck, blindsided him, didn't knock him down. Do you think I'm gonna let a little nigga like that knock me out? I just wanna see how that work. He thinking because you're older, so he all can't right. But I haven't been to. I've been gang banging since 1959. I've been in every major state prison in California. I ain't got no gang of hickeys upside my head and stab wounds. I'm the aggressor. I am not. I'm the predator. I'm not the prey. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm active. I walk these streets every day. I don't hide. I'm not in Dubai. I'm not in Alcapoco somewhere. I went to his hood. He came and he grew up in Pacoma, but he can't represent. So Pacoma. wait a minute. That was where you just was at when you took that, took the. Yes. You was in his hood. Yeah. And you say that's where Suge Knight done what? No, no. That where, where that was, that was in Compton where Suge Knight ran over our, our, our homeboy Terry Carter. That's 142nd. And, okay. Uh, and, and, but you went to his hood as I well. I went to his hood. He wasn't nowhere to be found. And nobody, you can't be there with his own homeboys. Mm-mm. They don't even want him there. All that talk. 
that talked and so, messed him up so the way he, he can't be in there. Now he didn't put a bag. Now he said he was going to knock me out. Now he going to kill me. He going to hire somebody. He ain't going to do it himself. Yeah. He said, you going to die, nigga. So repeat again why he said he wanted to knock you out in the first place because you went on be, Adam 22. You I went, went on, on no Adam jump? 22. They asked me, was, right. he from, was he a Piru? Right. And I said he wasn't from Compton. So you're really not answering the question if he was a Pyru or not. It's just the fact that he's not from Compton because there are other Pyrus all, sets, all but, around but the, the world. Dudes from Pacoima, they say on Pacoima. Right. Dudes from uh, Skyline said on Skyline. But they're still Pyru. But they're still Pyrus, okay. but they claim their hood. Right. So how are you going to be the national spokesman for the for the Pyru card, nobody assigned you to do this. Mm -hmm. So you just on Pyru, on Pyru, just running your mouth. You supposed to be on your set wherever you're right, from, right? Whatever your set is from. Okay, I got you. You know, mm -hmm. so it nobody's standing on it. It's just like dudes tell me all the time. Man, I seen you out there with Charleston White. More of you should have got up and slapped that nigga. But you could have caught a plane and came out here too. And did it yourself. <laughs> so you in Compton telling me, man, yeah, man, you, why didn't you slap mm -hmm. that nigga? Why didn't you come with me? Right. So everybody have their own view of what should have happened. But didn't nobody take arms up? Man, I hate that nigga Charleston White. You ain't went and seen him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, fuck whack, fuck this. But... If he buy you a, a car or something, you rolling with him. Mm -hmm. So it's not, not it's not like he ain't got a bag that can have me kill. But it, I don't think no pyro gonna do it. Right. And I some of my some of my homies the other day just hit me some crit homies. Man, what's what's happening with that? What we need to do? Mm -hmm. This is all media entertainment. He really don't want no smoke with me. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, and, and I hate to jump, even leave that subject, but last time you was on here, you was talking about people who were in the entertainment field, and Chris Brown name uh, came up, and he he, he it was t it was a mm -hmm. rebuttal because he said something on uh uh, uh it was on What's Drink Champs mm -hmm. on Nori's name uh, mm -hmm. uh, channel. He said uh I ain't clicking in, I ain't you know because he he basically felt a way. Because it was like, man. And, you know, and, and when I said, did I say that on y'all? Yeah, you said yeah, it on mine. Well, I'm just talking. Sometimes you can just say, I have nothing bad to say about Chris. Right. He represented. And when I was saying that dudes come in the neighborhood and do this, I wasn't actually referring to him. You just used him as which, an example. Which he hasn't done, but it wasn't his fault that he didn't do anything. Nobody demanded him to do anything. Right. He tried to deal with Fruit Town. He did, and yes, and 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 they stole from him, so he he disconnected himself from him. So you don't keep feeding me if I do you bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's logical, you know. But for dudes that come in and claim your neighborhood, and then go spend twenty five, thirty thousand dollars on a strip club and won't get a studio for your young kids to come holler in to do rap music for it, I think it's injustice. Mm -hmm. And that's for any hood that these dudes are claiming. And you can, we, you can, I could take you to Compton right now and I couldn't take you to a black restaurant to eat. We don't mm. have it in Compton. Wow. Why? <laughs> Mexicans took over. We gave it to them. Right, because... Well, I couldn't take you to a club so you could sit down and have a drink in Compton. The streets is rolled up like Mayberry at seven o'clock. Ain't if you're not going to the Jack in the Box, uh, McDonald's, or Taco Bell, you're not eating in Compton. Wow, that is crazy. And first and we, black run city west of Mississippi. How do we? How do we? How do we fix it? Start killing some of these politicians. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> We've had fourteen mayors in the city of Compton was the first black run city west of the Mississippi's. And we don't have a Martin Luther King. Every state in the United States in the South Martin is a Martin Luther King. King. But do you think it's the people's fault because they can go out here and vote all these people out and vote people that should be in there who to help? And, and you, these Negroes is vote. I remember one time uh, um, Omar Bradley's father had passed, Groucho, and one of our statesmen, Reverend Fisher, was officiating the funeral, right? Mm -hmm. And he was talking about Groucho and Groucho's life, and he was telling about the kids, don't cry for Groucho. He, he, he said, let me tell you this story. 
he said he had this gardener, this Mexican gardener, was a good gardener. And he came home one day and his wife said, kill that, go fire him. He got to get out of here. He said, well, fire the gardener. She said, he cut my prize roses. I love these roses. And he didn't cut them and put them in a bundle and, uh, and fire him. When Jose come, he said, Jose, man, I like you, but I got to live with my wife. Right. I have to fire you, Jose. So, he said, you cut her prize. He says, Reverend Fisher, the flowers had got their full bloom. And they were taking up the sun so the buds couldn't drop. Mm -hmm. All of these old coons is not letting the buds flow. Mm -hmm. So the young kids have nothing to do with nothing. And we steadily smashing them down. Sucking up all. We need to get a campaign. And every morning, these old people, we need to shoot them all. Damn. Get them out the way. I got to ask you about that jacket you got on, Death Row. Uh, I love it. Love the, love the fact that you got it on, but you go so far back with 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 Suge and, and just the, the interactions that you guys had when that, when that whole thing was on, a, you know, was on the rise. That campaign was going. There was a lot of money involved. It was a lot. They needed security and all kind of stuff. Um, how did you end up linking with Suge Knight? I'm, well, actually, when I first got out of prison, uh, we were over in Luther's Park, and Suge and, and Joel Lim came with the idea. And he was like, man, you ain't banging, get out the park. And he said, man, I'm trying to start death row. I just left San Quentin, and it sounded like, whoa, that sound hell of a to me, right? So they started their little campaign. They got, uh, I was in Ironwood in 1994. I hear death row was popping. I get out, and I see dudes as ex-crackheads. They all got... Death Row Chains on and Acura Legends and doing this and that. Like, man, come on, get with the row. But I've never gone along to get along. So it was, I never made a dime with you. I, I never made one penny with him. Nothing. And so when he did his thing, they went to the pinnacle. I, I was on the set with Pac in gridlock. Then... Uh, Suge brought on uh, Reggie Wright Jr. as his security, and the police came in, the Nation of Islam, we got out. And it went on, and the untimely demise and everything started going down. By 1999, Death Row was finished. So Suge started going through his heartbreaks, getting these bad deals, and not knowing how to replenish himself. So now that Snoop has bought the, bought the name Death Row. Correct. That's what I wanted to. So mm -hmm. I feel it's a, a testimony to Compton. I mean, we was the biggest, biggest record corporation on the West Coast. Death Row Records, out of, straight out of Compton. Only thing bigger than that was NWA, but they never had the money Death Row had. It went to $147 million known all over the world. Did some of the most powerful music. And they say a money and fool soon part. part huh? Yeah, no, you're exactly right. <laughs> you um, know, so people are like, man, why are you rocking Death Row? Well, because it's Compton. You can't say Death Row without saying Compton. A dude was asking me the other day about one of the little homies, he got political on me and was talking about the Nation of Islam and how the Nation of Islam had Malcolm X killed. Right? And I said, well, bro, first of all, you have incorrect information. But I would like to let you ask you this. Do you know Malik el Haj Shabazz? He said, no, who is that? I said, when Malcolm left the Nation of Islam, he became Malik el Haj Shabazz. He wasn't Malcolm X anymore. But the only way that you know anything about Malcolm X, you guys, to go with the Nation of Islam, huh? You have no edifice of Malcolm X today. No Malcolm X foundations. No, no they don't have Malik El Haj Shabazz Boulevard in New York. They got Malcolm X Boulevard. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave them that 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 lane. Just like man, who knew us before Charleston White? Before we got on this platform, didn't nobody know me. Mm -mm. Now I walk around, people, hey, Ayatollah. So, are you mad at Charleston? Well, hell no. <laughs> I'll do everything but kiss him. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, you have to give credit 
and credence to the people that built you. And that's what I'm about. And I, I think it's amazing. I did Dre Day for Dr. Dre. He's the first black billionaire out of Compton, California. So I did June 19th. Kids don't know what June 19th, what Juneteenth mm -hmm. means. But now in Compton, June 19th is Dre Day. Wow. Great. That's great. You stuff. feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So we have to be. Oh, we all talk about when we were kings and queens. We don't know nothing about that. Let's deal with the winos and crackheads we used to be mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and go from there. Is there a story there? I also, uh, Whitney Houston, you knew you met, you knew her. I, you I, 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 I worked with Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston. How was, how did you even link with Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston? Through uh, Captain Shaheed Muhammad was my captain in the Nation of Islam. Uh, I worked with Barry Hankerson and Black Ground Records. You know, what did you do for uh, Bobby and Whitney? Just, just kind of secure the premises or? Yeah. Man, you know what would make it so cold? Grown people don't like me, but children do. Okay. And so Bobby Christina, that was I, I didn't chase him. I had Bobby Christina, Princia, and and little Bobby Jr. Wow. You dig what I'm saying? Because I don't mind going to parks and the, the shows and right. the ones I'm spending your money. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. So then after they went back, Whitney was is an amazing lady with all her insecurities. She's a Leo. A, a lion, ah, growling, but got a gang of insecurities. Wow. B. Brown, he's a space cadet. Me and him born this day apart. Aquarians, right? So everything, so, uh, they thought that once they got Whitney away from Bobby, mm -hmm. that she would be all right, but she wasn't. She started messing with Ray J. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't there, but I understand Clive Davis said she worth more to me dead than she is alive. Wow. Uh -uh. So mysteriously, she then took an overdose and drowned. So you don't believe that that was... Do you? I, I don't believe in the good tooth fairy either. Mm. And I don't believe rabbit's legs. And then Bobby Christina turned around and started messing with a guy who was supposed to get $50 million and she ended up a year later, dead the same way. I'm the same mother? way. That tripped me out. It tripped you out. Don't you think that's suspicious? Wow, that's crazy, man. Crazy. But who it? would? Who you think did it? <laughs> who got? Who, who benefited from it? Clive Davis got some billions about with her catalog. Mm -hmm. He had all the insurance on her. I didn't do it. But what would he gain from her daughter? Because he didn't have to give her the fifty million dollars. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, that that that's something the way so I'm just that that's the story that I'm telling I, the facts are the facts and her family so it wouldn't pass down to her family now no. like her mom and well, they, they, they show you how life is once all of this happened and, and, and Bob knows a lot about the interactions of what happened. Right. Now they gave him a TV show and he's back on tour mm -hmm. and he's back with New Edition. New Edition didn't want to deal with him because mm -hmm. they didn't like his attitude. But now you have to wait. What is success? Right. Uh, you know, I, I heard a thing they said about Michael Jackson when Mike died mm -hmm. and they asked his family, do y'all want to go back to Ohio? Uh, is they, he was, he's from um Oh, what's Gary, Indiana? You got that's one son gone. You don't want to lose everybody, do you? Mm -hmm. So let it go. Wow, man! You being in California, man. You know, uh, it's a lot of lot of scenarios out there. We just interviewed Kenya Ware, and she was telling us about the night when uh, um, Tupac got killed, and, mm -hmm. and she was in uh, Vegas, and she was yeah, talking was to him right too. before yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, you was in Vegas that night. Yeah. So a lot of people say that Suge had something to do with it. Wow. I'm just telling lot, you, yeah, even being in the car. That's, that's a scenario set up, but you say, well, ha, you been to Vegas? Yes, a lot mm -hmm. of times. Uh, and on fight night at a Mike Tyson fight, Las Vegas Boulevard is packed. Right. Bumper to bumper. You got a trail car, you got police in the car, and you got another car California, gangbangers, we territorial. We don't know your turf. Yeah. So you think that somebody with no formal uh, 
ground technique can come in front of traffic, make a U-turn in front of these cars, where did you go on top of the curve and run over the pedestrians and shoot in the car and nobody got the license plate? Mm. How that sound? Wow. You was I never thought about it. You was there. You was you was there in, in Vegas. Were you working with Mike Tyson then? You was so what how, how did you end up in that relationship with Mike Tyson as far as one of the other brothers, Lowhead, got Can and and Captain Shahid Muhammad put me on that detail. You know, one of the best details I ever had. Mike is a genuine, I mean, he's one of the best people you could ever have. Why do you say that? He's a giver. He's, he's a dude, the persona that you see around regular people, man, he would give you anything you need. He'd come over to my mother's house and sleep on the couch. So he would come to your mother's house? Yeah. And so what would, you, what would conversations be like with, with Mike Tyson back then? Well, we come from the same piece of cloth. He went in prison. I was in prison. So we have, he's, he, he was a Muslim. We went to Juma prayer together, you know, and... Uh, like I say, I'm not a go to along to get along. If I feel like something ain't supposed to be done, I'm gonna say it. Like, bro, this is not this is not a good look. Mm -hmm. Everybody else wanna do what you wanna do because you paying the tab. That don't work with me. Else, you don't need me. But Mike Tyson don't need no bodyguard. He, he can beat know. up every and anybody yeah, that comes his way. Like, put himself because I can knock you out. Oh, you sue me? What you gonna get? Some parole? <laughs> Mike said, "Hit you, he was gonna sue him." Huh? Mm -hmm. You seen him when they, he had fight on the airplane? Oh, on, the, on the airport, yeah. yeah so he yeah. should have had you right by his side when right, that happened. Uh, yeah, I blew that I, behind the situation. I talked about getting my house burglarized. Wow! And, and I went to the feds for a year. Mm -hmm. Man, so do you think you like uh, Mike Tyson? He got a new show, a podcast that he's doing, man, mm -hmm. and he he went off on Boosie on there. Uh, well, he he didn't went out. He he didn't said stern things to a lot of people on there. Is way. that right? Oh no, yeah. he got a podcast. He got a podcast, yeah. and he's doing his thing on there too. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm you get ready to get him on when I do this Pot Scroll Farms podcast. Hey, all he do is smoke on there all yeah. day. That's yeah. all he, would he do. Love your podcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He definitely would love your podcast, man. So, man, what can you? Would you ever? be willing to sit down with WAG 100 and discuss hey man solution or resolution it, what I, I just gotta die huh no <laughs> you said it word is bond but but he could let's check this bag out see what see yeah, this bag yeah, yeah. so you know? I mean it was a hell of a stern uh, conversation when you guys had uh, when you exchanged I seen that it wasn't I hadn't heard that one I just heard the first one yeah. where he had spoke on you on right. Clubhouse right. the one you just shared I hadn't heard that one. Right. What, did that happen over just a personal call? That's a personal call. He he called himself. He said, well, I got 30 minutes of, of tape on this nigga and don't make me pull it out. But at the same time, I heard him clicking. I clicked too. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you be thinking. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't know man, if there ever is uh, like uh, closure when it comes down to stuff like that. When you see a I person. I mean, when you talk about killing somebody, knocking me out. Okay, that's neither here nor there. I never took it to you like that. Because it was knocking you out on the on the Yeah, on, when on I the see him, I'm going to knock him out. I'm going to knock his old ass out. But after talking to you on the phone, it was, I'm going to put a bag on your head. I, yeah, and I, I, you, I, I, where can we meet? He said, wherever we meet, you're going to die. Well, suppose you die. No, nigga, we going to meet? Well, where can we go do this at? I'm going to show you what this bag going to do. Man, you did 20-something uh, years in prison. 25. 25 years. I don't think that's the first time that somebody's tried to say they was going to do this or that to you, right? <laughs> no. I ain't got no gang of hickeys on my head either. <laughs> Those stab wounds. Hey, shoot, they, you can pick a number, get in the line. A lot of people want me dead. Wow. I mean, it's just the relationship that you guys have, have uh, built, like, far as, you know, entertainers. People know you. It ain't like you you somebody that people don't know. Right. He finds that out after he speaks and say what he says. After. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Just like Ch he's the West Coast Charleston White. Wow. Just talk. So you see him as Charleston White of the West Coast. The, that's the West Coast Charleston White. The exact, the exact he same. He didn't ask for 147 phase and ain't fought nobody. Yeah. He didn't ask a, a what? 147 phase. Nigga, where you at? I'll pull up. And he ain't fought nobody yet. 
<laughs> wow, man. Well, man, hey, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. It's been an honor and a pleasure, of course. A blessing, man, to have you back down here in Texas, man. man this I, Texas I, I heat, man. It. Hey, man. They said it's big in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> well, that ain't your first rodeo, man. So, hey, man, thank you so much for coming on the I show. Appreciate you. Man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.